In a previous video, I showed some light bulbs that I got in a recent thrift store trip. And that included these two 50 watt metal halide lamps, which I was super excited to find because I've never owned any small metal halide lamps. Nor have I ever owned any coated metal halide lamps. I only have one other metal halide lamp. Uh, I powered it on in a video years ago. Uh, it's 175 watts, so it creates an obscene amount of light, so it's not useful for any general purpose lighting, except maybe outdoors, or if I was growing plants or something. And it's also clear, so it's, it's in very glary. Um, metal halide produces a great color, a nice pure bright white that clear ones make. But the coated ones do have slightly better color rendering index, as I understand it, although that depends on whether the coating is an actual fluorescent coating, like a DX coating, like mercury vapor lamps have, or if it's something else. But yeah, these are 50 watt bulbs, so they're not going to be nearly as obscenely bright, and they're coated. And I don't know if it's a DX coating, which uh, would make the light color warmer, give it sort of a... Uh, um, a warmer hue or if it's just a plain white coating like an incandescent light bulb would have I'm assuming the latter because if we look at the etch here the part number says MP 50 W slash C C meaning coated if it was a DX coating it would say slash DX and then it says slash U which means universal burn which means you can orient it any way you want which is good and then it says slash UVS, meaning UV shield, meaning these have a shielded arc tube, which is good because unlike mercury vapor lamps, metal halide lamps uh, do have a remote risk of exploding when they fail. Um, and if that explosion of the arc tube is bad enough, it'll break the bulb itself. And then you'll have very hot shards of glass flying everywhere. So because of that, ordinary metal halide lamps, cheaper lamps, need to be in an enclosed fixture. But these are open rated. These don't need to be enclosed. If the arc tube explodes, there's a secondary glass shield around the arc tube uh, that'll contain the explosion so that the bulb itself won't break, which is good. So yeah, these are very enthusiast friendly metal halide lamps. They're small, they're coated, so not as glary and they're open rated and universal burn rated which is great and I looked up the part number here and these bulbs are standard brand but when I look up the part number uh, I get not standard but a brand called Venture so I don't know if standard became Venture or if it's a different company that just by coincidence has the same uses the same part number but I looked up the part number and what I got were Venture branded bulbs and the color temperature is supposedly 3700 K. That's quite warm for a metal halide lamp, so these might have a nice warm color to them. And I'm not a fan of warm color, like I hate warm white fluorescent lamps, but for high intensity discharge, like for metal halide, a warm color is novel. So I, I'm actually quite excited to see if these have a warm, a warmer color to them. Not that 3700 Ks very warm. In fact, uh, that CFL up there is 3500K, and although the camera isn't uh, going to show it very well, it's a pretty cool uh, white. So these might not be as warm as I'm thinking they might be. But yeah, these are really cool, and I have everything I need to light these up. Um, I went to my mom's house today, and got and uh, grabbed from the basement my old 50 watt mercury vapor light fixture. You guys haven't seen this in a long time. Still got one of my two vintage 50 watt mercury vapor lamps in it. Now this fixture is actually using a 50 watt metal halide ballast because 50 watt mercury vapor ballasts are just not common to come by. So it's got a 50 watt metal halide ballast in it, but uh. Metal 50 watt metal halide lamps have a higher arc current than 50 watt mercury vapor lamps, so I had to tone down the current 
and I did that by putting a 30 odd, like a 34 ohm resistor in line with the primary side of the ballast and it's horrible because that resistor gets obscenely hot <laughs> and the, I don't think the resistance is very stable and uh, it's, it's just kind of a terrible setup this fixture is but it served the purpose back in the time when I was really big into you know novel lighting and I'd never had a mercury vapor lamp and I found these bulbs on eBay and then I found a 50 watt metal halide ballast on eBay and then I got this fixture from the ReStore which is what this fixture was originally 175 watt metal halide and uh, so yeah I've got everything I need in this fixture to light these lamps I just gotta bypass the resistor so we're back up to the proper lamp current and one other thing is that unlike my 175 watt metal halide lamp, these lamps are pulse start. 50 watt metal halide lamps are pulse start lamps, meaning that in order to start them, they need to get a really high voltage pulse. Uh, and you do that with an igniter, which is wired uh, into the ballast circuit. And uh, when I, I do have an igniter, when I bought that, when I bought the 50 watt metal halide ballast that's in here, it came with the igniter. So I have the igniter. I've never used it. I'm a little nervous. I hope I can figure out how to wire it correctly. And I hope I don't get zapped with 4,000 volts <laughs> as a result. That wouldn't be fun at all. But uh, anyway, I haven't powered this fixture on in a few years. I think it's still complete. Uh, we'll get a rude awakening if it turns out I have uh, something missing or there's a wire touching something it shouldn't but I'm just going to plug it in here and we'll fire this up. We'll, we'll just make this our baseline so we can remember what a 50 watt mercury vapor lamp looks like. Alright. And of course a DX coated mercury vapor lamp. The first thing you get is that beautiful pink color which is more of a red when the bulb is new but this bulb has quite a few hours on it now so it's more of a pink and uh, over the next several minutes it'll warm up to full brightness which you can already see it's already in the process of doing and uh, the camera is not giving you an accurate uh, there that's about as close as I can get it for now but I'll let that warm up and then we'll come back and observe it at full brightness all right we're fully warmed up and yep that that uh, color is unmistakable. Very beautiful color. Very poor color rendering, even from a DX coated mercury vapor lamp. But the color is just, <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, sort of a purplish tone to it. Well, there's really no way I can get this camcorder to accurately show the color, but what I observe with my eyes is it makes my fingernails kind of purplish. Very poor color rendering but a very nice color in itself. Um, of course a clear mercury vapor lamp makes a very sickly blue color and the DX coating fluoresces red from the UV light and so that red combined with the sickly blue makes a very rough approximation of, uh, of white which is certainly good enough in uh, you know, outdoor lighting especially, walkway lighting, whatever. And I believe the I believe a DX coated mercury vapor lamp is slightly more efficient than a clear mercury vapor lamp. There's so much UV being generated that uh, making use of that UV to generate even more light does add to the efficiency despite some of the visible light generated by the mercury discharge being blocked or you know attenuated by the coating but yeah there's a 50 watt dx coated mercury vapor lamp we'll start retooling this thing getting it ready to uh, run 50 watt metal halide lamps I'm excited you can see the mercury vapor bulb is a little bit shorter than the metal halide bulbs although they're both an ED17 envelope I'm a fan of the ED shape bulbs. Too bad they didn't make uh, uh, incandescent bulbs in this shape. 
here's what we're looking at 50 watt metal halide ballast 30 or 34 ohm resistor which I screwed onto a heat sink and uh, I was actually kind of smart with this um, of course with a high intensity discharge light fixture if you turn it off and then turn it back on while the bulb is still hot the bulb will not start again until it cools down and during that time that the bulb is not running at least in a on a ballast like this um, more current is flowing through the ballast than normal which means that this resistor would get even hotter than it's supposed to well I thought of that years ago when I assembled this this uh, nightmare I put a fuse in line so that if I ever turned it on and the bulb didn't start that fuse would blow and I wouldn't burn the house down from this resistor turning into molten lava very nice good job flow uh, but I've got to bypass this resistor now so let me do that okay I bypassed the resistor I also took the fuse out because it's not big enough to uh, It'll probably blow as soon as the metal halide lamp starts anyway because I attuned it to just be able to run the fixture as it was without blowing. So without that resistor in place it'll just blow from the extra current. Um, oh that's a capacitor. It doesn't do anything active. It's purely for power factor correction. It's just paralleled with the primary side of the ballast. Uh, I could remove that and the fixture will work exactly the same. Now before I figure out how to wire in that igniter, I'm going to see if I can start the bulbs without the igniter. Sometimes you can start a metal halide lamp, a pulse start metal halide lamp, without the igniter. Um, basically you might do it by flipping the power on and off and the inductive kick from the ballast will be enough to start the lamp. So I'm going to screw one of these bulbs in and just for safety's sake, for, for the beginning now because we don't know what it'll do, although these bulbs do look new, I shone a flashlight through them and the arc tube looks perfectly clear and the bases don't have any scratches or corrosion or any, anything so these might be brand new bulbs which is great but I'm just going to put the cover on it just for now and uh, I'll plug it in just without the igniter and see if we can get the bulb to start without it. Alright, let's see if this puppy does anything without the igniter in place. I'm, I'm just a little nervous. Should be fine though. And uh, as expected, we have nothing. Okay, well, time to get on Google and uh, see how to wire that up. Well, there's the igniter and I think I've got it wired in. Oh boy, this brings back memories of uh, doing this stuff and just, I don't know how, I've never hurt myself and now I'm, you know, I'm going to be 30 in a couple of years and I still don't know how I don't hurt myself. Oh god, alright, uh, let me get you back on the tripod and we'll see what the heck this does. Alright, contact. Hey! <laughs> ooh, ooh, we got a lot of different colors. Okay, it's looking a lot like a mercury vapor lamp right now. Well, except for the red, we're actually getting a lot of blue right now. That was not nearly as violent of a startup as I thought it would be. My 175 watt metal halide lamp makes a ton of drama when it starts up flickering and it actually makes noise. It makes like these, these like, like screeching noises for a split second and this, this was very drama free. So it's, it's very, it's a very cool color right now. The camera is making it look bluer than it is. Okay, it's brightening up very quickly. It is still quite a cool color. Oh man, it is already way brighter than the mercury vapor lamp. <laughs> My camcorder is screaming at me to turn the neutral density filter all the way up. That is not the color. Oh, this freaking camcorder. Oh my goodness, this is super bright. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so bright. There, it's about as good as I can get. 
Wow, it's bright. Oh my goodness, let me, uh, holy cow, this place is lit right the heck up. It's so bright, it's like, it's like t twice as bright as the mercury vapor lamp. Man, no wonder Mer they quit making mercury vapor lamps. They're so inefficient compared to even a small metal halide lamp. I'm not seeing, well, I'm kind of seeing the 3700K-ness. Let me adjust my white balance yet again. There, that's, that's looking very accurate. Oh my god, it's so bright. Uh, <laughs> wow. Not a ton of heat coming off it. So far, it's cooler than the mercury vapor bulb. Oh my gosh. Oh, I've got to... Oh, turn my lights off here so we can fully appreciate how stupid bright this is. I have a pillow blocking my view now. Wow, that is bright. This is the only light turned on in here. I've turned all the other lights off. That is really bright. And the color rendering is definitely way better than the mercury vapor lamp. Would I call it 3700K? I guess so. I expected a more colory color to it, like maybe more pinkish tone to it. But that's not what it's given off. It's very much a bright white with a little bit of yellow to it. And I think that phosphor is fluorescing. I think it's not just a straight coating because it is a much warmer color than my 175 watt metal halide lamp, which is a clear lamp. So I think that is a phosphor that fluoresces. I don't know if it's a DX coating, but it does fluoresce to some extent. There you go. That lamp came right up. Everything is working just fine. Drama free and very very bright really impressive so let me power it off here we'll see if it uh, I'll turn my neutral density filter off we'll see if there's any orange glow afterwards no it went just right off oh yeah there is a bit of an orange glow all right I will uh, let that cool down for a while and then we'll try the other bulb. All right, bulb number two, contact. All right, so we do get a bit of a pinkish color. Not that you can see that. Oh, and the color just suddenly shifted to be more cool. That was sort of bluish. Wow, it gets really bright really quickly. You can just barely see the halide discharge through the phosphor. And just like that, it is already it is already brighter than the mercury vapor lamp and I would say that is about full brightness already. We barely uh, barely had time to comment on it. <laughs> Very bright bulb. But there you go. Well that was fun and what a nice quality of light out of these lamps. But boy, are they bright too. But this isn't the last you'll see of these lamps because I just recently bought an electronic metal halide ballast, which I'm pretty excited to test out. I have it right here, as a matter of fact. It's just a whittle guy. And uh, in a future video, we'll see how this ballast 
powers these lamps. We'll test if an electronic metal halide ballast can power a mercury vapor lamp, and we'll discuss why, regardless of that, you take a risk running a mercury vapor lamp on an electronic metal halide ballast. So uh, stay tuned for that video in the future. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Uh, a special thanks to my feathered friends right here who support me via Patreon. And to everyone else, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.